Tonight, we're going to continue our study of the parables, and we're going to take a look tonight at the parable of the sower. This is probably the best known, or at least one of the best known of the parables, and that might be partly because it's the first parable, and when Jesus explains the purpose of the parables, that's this is the one that he has told. And so, we're going to, to take a look at this one uh, tonight, and uh, I don't think it'll be very new to many people, but it's still a very important parable. Uh, in fact, it's critical to understand the teaching in it uh, as far as how we're going to uh, listen and please God. So, when we talk about the, the parable of the sower, we find it in Matthew, and Mark, and Luke. And uh, Matthew and Mark are very, very similar in how they're worded. Well, Luke is very similar too, but it's a little bit more different than the others. But uh, we'll read it out of Mark here. In, in Mark 4, verse 3 through 9, Jesus says, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground, where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, because it had no root, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground, and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced." some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. When he explains uh, the, the meaning behind the parable, after he talks about why he's teaching in parables at all, which we looked at last week, it, here in Mark, in verses 13 through 20, again, it's very similar, although not word for word the same, between Matthew and Mark. And it's helpful to look at all of them. Uh, we're going to look at Luke as well. But he, he says uh, in the explanation, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? There's something that Jesus is saying here, that if you understand how to think about a parable, if you understand how to approach it, then you can understand parables even when he does not explain it. But because his disciples couldn't understand this one, he's going to explain it. And there are other parables that he explains as well. And when we learn how parables work, then we can apply that to the parables that he does not explain. All right, but let's continue with his explanation from verse 14. The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown, when they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things enter in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who, ex who hear the word accept it and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. All right, so... He says that, that there's these different people hearing the word. And when we look at Luke's uh, account of this explanation, uh, he says there in verse 11 that the seed is the word of God. If you look in Matthew, it says it's the word of the kingdom. Uh, and so it, the word of the kingdom is the word of God. It is something that is being taught from God about the kingdom of God, whether it's the gospel of Christ or the, the teaching of the kingdom, but especially, of course, the gospel is how we are saved. And so that seems to be the focus, even though uh, he just generalizes it to the word of God. And we should 
think of all the Word of God in the same way, really, because it depends on our heart as how we're going to accept it. No matter if it's the gospel or any other teaching from God, our heart is going to determine how we're going to receive that. Now, with, the, with Mark, he's, he talked about Satan coming and taking away uh, from those who did not understand. And here in Luke, he says, he does it lest they should believe and be saved. So they're, they're not, uh, he's taking the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But that doesn't just happen supernaturally. This is something that is happening because they don't understand, right? They're not, they're not listening to understand, and they're, they're not believing, and they're not being saved, and therefore the word is completely ineffective in them, and that's the work of Satan in their lives. Uh, but then with the, the ones who uh, are on the rocky ground, they receive the word with joy, and they, you know, they obey the word. They hear the word, they obey it. It's he, in Luke, he says they believe for a while, and in time of temptation, fall away. So this temptation we find in, in Mark and Matthew is the difficulties of life, the things that come as a result of the word. Uh, whether it's the word is causing us to do things that are difficult or we're persecuted because we've obeyed the word of God. Uh, these are people who don't have the kind of faith, the kind of heart that will keep them faithful even when times are hard. They're hoping for an easy life in the kingdom of Christ, and that's not how it works. And then you have the ones among thorns and uh, Luke says that they bring uh, no fruit to maturity. They're choked out with these cares and riches and pleasures of life. The things that Mark says are the, the desire for other things. And then the most important difference, I think, that really helps us understand something really important here in verse 15 on the, the good ground uh, is these that have heard the word with a noble and good heart and keep it, and bear fruit with, with patience. So he says that it's, it has to do with this noble and good heart. Some other translations say uh, a, uh, uh, an honest uh, and good heart, or good and honest heart. So uh, they, they keep the word because they have a noble and good heart, or a good and honest heart. When they hear it, they do it, and they bear fruit with Patience. That's what Brother Gazu has been talking about in this, these changes we need to make in our life to be holy. They're bearing that fruit with patience. All right, so when we look at the, the explanation and we look at the original parable, remember it's parallel, right? That's what a parable is. You have the physical story that represents something spiritual. So they're, they're parallel to each other in some way. So the seed is the word of the kingdom or the word of God. And the seed that fell beside the road and the birds came and ate them up are the ones that hear the word of the kingdom, but they don't understand it. And so Satan comes and snatches it away uh, so they won't believe and be saved. So they don't understand it. But it's, it's their own fault that they don't understand it because it has to do with their heart. Others fell on rocky places. So the rocky places uh, where they immediately sprang up, you know, the plants were coming up, but the, when the sun arose, they were scorched and withered away. And Jesus says that that's the one who receives the word immediately, but they don't have a firm root. They, their faith is not deeply established in Christ. They're, they're wanting what he's promising, but their faith isn't strong enough to get them through the hard times. And so they immediately fall away when difficulties arise because of the word. Uh, and um, Luke says they believe for a while, and then in time of temptation, they fall away. When you talk about the thorns and the thorns choking out uh, the, 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 what's growing up, those hear the word and the worry of the world, 
So worrying about what's going to happen here and the deceitfulness of wealth, which is the desire for other things. We, we're focused on the things of the earth. They choke the word. We're, we're not focused on what the word says. We're focused on the things around us and we become unfruitful. We do not bear fruit to maturity. And then there's no point in having heard the word in the first place, because what's the point of planting seed if it grows a plant, but there's no fruit on it? There's, that's useless. But others fell on the good soil and yielded the crop. And those are the ones who hear the word and understand it. They bear fruit and bring forth some a hundredfold, some 60 and some 30. And Luke tells us that they have a noble and good heart and they keep it and bear fruit with patience. So we've gone over that a couple of times here, but let's just observe some things now. God is telling us that everyone who does not bear fruit does not have a noble and good heart. You cannot say that, yeah, I know I haven't really made changes in my life and you know, I'm basically the same as I was when I became a Christian, but I have a good heart. God knows my heart. Well, God does know your heart. And he knows that if you're not bearing fruit, you do not have a good heart. You do not have a noble and good heart if you're not bearing fruit. If you don't understand the word, you don't understand it because you're not listening with the right kind of heart. Now, I'm not saying that every verse, when you first read it, you're going to understand it, even if you have a good heart. The scriptures are clear that there are difficult passages, and that's, that's okay. But we're going to keep working on it to understand it if we have a good heart and we want to know what God says. Even some that do believe don't have the right kind of heart because they can't stand up to persecution or other difficulties because of the word, or they let the cares of this life and the desire for other things choke out the word. So if you're not bearing fruit for whatever reason, it's a problem with your heart. You do not have a good heart. But those who have a noble and good heart will produce fruit, but they won't all produce the same amount of fruit. Jesus makes that very clear. Some a hundredfold, some 60, and some 30. But God is happy when they're bearing fruit at all. So we can find that some people need to change more than others. It may be that someone has been in deep wickedness and has to change almost everything in their life. Uh, and so they're going to bear more fruit than someone who has been in wickedness and absolutely needs to be saved. They're not righteous people, but they don't have as much to change in their life as some others. And then some others are going to struggle to grow more than some uh, for various reasons. We might have other pressures around us. We may not have as much encouragement around us, but we will still grow and if we're growing, as Brother Gazu talked about, we are all considered to be good soil. If we are growing in accordance with the Word, what the Word teaches, then we're bearing the fruit that comes from the Word. The seed produces the fruit. I do want to point out just one thing that, that this uh, parable does not teach, uh, something that sometimes is brought up in teaching about it, and that is that a farmer has to first prepare the soil before he plants. So God must prepare us before we can be the good soil. You know, a farmer doesn't just throw seed out. He tills the soil, right? He, maybe he puts some fertilizer in and all of that sort of thing. And so God is, is going to have to do that to us for us to have this good heart, right? Well, I mean, that's what preparing the soil would mean in this parable. But the point of this parable is that the farmer sowed the seed on all kinds of ground, including ground that's clearly unprepared. So it's not about the farmer preparing the soil. That has nothing to do with it. There's nothing mentioned about it in this parable. And so since the, the preparation of the soil would be getting someone to have a good and noble heart, that would mean God is to blame for everyone that doesn't have that kind of heart. You know, why didn't God prepare them too? And that's not what the parable says at all. The parable is clearly placing the blame on those that don't have the noble and good heart. It's not about the farmer causing the soil to be that way. 
the soil is that way and the farmer spreads the same seed everywhere and gives all the soil the same opportunity but it's up to the soil right we if anybody's going to prepare the soil it's us we're going to have to change our hearts that doesn't mean god doesn't help us obviously if you know who god is and what he has done that helps you to change your heart the fear of the lord helps you to change your heart but we have to make that decision we have to do that all right so if anybody is not saved after hearing the word there's two possible problems the problem's not with the seed it's not with the word of god so either we did not hear the real word of god so the seed was not the true seed i i say faulty here but i mean what i mean by that it's not the actual seed not the actual word of the kingdom um, or those that here do not have noble and good hearts to properly understand the word. Those are the only two options that we find in this parable. If, if somebody is uh, receiving the true seed, the word of the kingdom, and they're not bearing fruit, or they're not even understanding it, they're not, they're not obeying it, there could be a problem with the one teaching it, and it's not actually the word of God at all, or it can be a problem with that person's heart. And uh, we can never put the blame on somebody else if we've heard the word and we don't respond. So make sure the seed you're planting is the true word of the kingdom. It will do its work in any good and honest heart. And make sure you have a noble and good heart and you're willing to deal with the difficulties that come from the world uh, from the word and obedience to the word and don't be distracted by the things in this world and have a desire for all of these other things all right that's the lesson for tonight thank you very much